I'm going to take another ring. Now this is the same size diameter as the body tube and I want to glue that over the top of this. I can do it over this end. Okay, now I don't want it flush with the centering ring. I want it back just a little bit. Probably about a sixteenth of an inch. And the reason for that is when I put my cone over the top of it, I want to use that uh, the inside as a little step to help guide the ring, guide the transition over the top of that. Just like that. See how that's going to work? Okay, so that when you get it in place, go ahead and glue it down. And I'm going to skip that part. And through the magic of video, it's already dry. And so now it's just a matter of gluing this on right here. Now, I do not really like using uh, wood glue on transitions because the wood glue, as I said before, it swells the fibers and then it contracts them. And it's going to give you a kind of a rough appearance. So what I like to use is CA glue, which is super glue. Okay, so as FDR slid it on, I can come back here and I'm right now I'm using thin, super thin CA glue. And I'm just going to let it wick underneath that transition. I'm just going around the perimeter. If any gets on the outside surface, just take a paper towel and wipe it off. Now the, the super thin variety, it, it cures up really fast, so you got to work quick if you're going to wipe it off and then do the front end. Okay, you should do this outdoors or where you have adequate ventilation because when it kicks off it'll make your eyes teary which it's doing to my eyes right now. Okay, we're almost done here and our next step is to take the super thin and again we're going to saturate the whole uh, the whole the whole surface of the paper. Uh, the super glue will wick into that paper and make it a really stiff and I'm really working into this seam here first because I don't want that seam coming apart because right now the only thing that's holding it is the uh, rubber cement and it doesn't have very much um, holding power but the super glue once it grabs it it'll lock it down pretty good okay so then after you get your seam we can go ahead and just start laying it on real thick and you can see it's it's rolling around by itself and then just every few seconds go ahead and wipe it off any of the excess so I'm gonna go ahead and do this to this whole thing and I'm gonna take another pause here and through the magic of video you won't even know that I'm gone okay I'm back and as you can see um, I forgot to tell you whenever you're using the thin CA glue Wear your safety goggles because it can splatter and you don't want it in your eye. Okay, so I've, I'm done now with that. And you can go ahead and inspect your seam. And I've got some thick CA. Now if your seam looks like it might be spreading apart and you have a little bit of a gap there, you can fill that with the thick CA glue. And I can just lay it on. And most of mine is pretty good except for the very ends where it did spread apart a little bit. And then I like to take a little plastic baggie and just kind of work it in and also smooth it out at the same time because the CA won't stick to the, the plastic bag. And then if you have an accelerator, you can go ahead and kick it off with the accelerator and wipe it off and it will be instantly cured. Okay, and at this point now we're ready to sand and you can sand the entire surface of this and you're going to want to do that anyway. Uh, just be careful when you're working that seam as you're sanding. It 
so that you don't uh, accidentally cut, uh, break it open. Just work it, and I like to use those, uh, and I didn't bring any with me today, but those uh, foam sanding pads because they have a little bit of a curvature to them and you can, and it kind of hugs the, the, the outside of the transition. So sand the whole surface and then go ahead and stick it into the tube and now we're going to sand this way and remember that overlap? We're going to sand all that overlap off. Let's see how fast I can do it for you. And I'm using some pretty medium grit sandpaper here. See, and I'm keeping it parallel to the tube because I don't want to round off that edge. But you get the general gist of the idea here. That's why we had that overlap there. See, now it's starting to look really good right in this area. All right. So you can see now we're going to have a nice edge there. And if we did that right, um, we can we can um, go ahead and tack down the edge if it starts coming up. Mine is coming up right there. So, and if you're going to do this, go ahead and use the thin CA. Just going to I like these little applicator tips because they allow you to get right down in the edge. And because there's a little shelf under there, it's going to grab it nicely. All right, so that is the procedure. Go ahead and finish sanding it, and you're going to end up with a great transition. And the, because it's been soaked with the, the CA, um, it's going to have a nice stiffness to it. Um, and you can also stiffen it up even more, um, and the directions for that are in the book, again, Model Rocket Design and Construction. Um, and then when you're done, uh, because it's got the CA on it, uh, it will paint up really nice uh, without soaking up a lot of paint. Uh, so there's the transition, and my name is Tim Van Milligan, and I'm from Apogee Components. Our website is www.apogeerockets.com. Please come and visit our website and let us know how we're doing. Thank you. Okay, uh, I'm Al Zelenek. I'm local. I'm a Colorado Springs resident. And uh, I buy from Apogee because of the outstanding service and the friendly people. There is not a question that is too dumb for them to answer. Uh, I was totally ignorant when I started on high power rocketry. And I'm rapidly becoming an expert because of the folks here at, uh, at Apogee. I mean, you could buy this stuff online anywhere, but the outstanding service and the friendly people are second to none.